It's that time again for me to fill a whole coloring page with only one color. Time for something fiery, a little bit of spice and everything nice. It's time for red. Also a huge shout out to Shopify for sponsoring this video, but more on that later. Hey people, it's Temi. If you are new here, you already know what we're doing. I'm using the Ems Drawing Coloring Book as usual. The coloring book I'm using, any markers, any other supplies will all be linked down in the description box. But let's pick our reds. I'm going into my massive Ohuhu 320 set as usual and most of the reds are up here but on first glance everything is kind of looking pink. And I'm a bit worried for how many reds we actually have and looking at the swatch cards I can see that we've got a few down on this card. Maybe I can get away with some of these especially the ones that have red in their name and then this final fluorescent red on the final swatch card. I'm just going to quickly grab everything that screams red on first glance and then I'm going to compare against the swatches and against the names to see what else we can have because other than like a true blood red, a wine, burgundy kind of shade, what else do we really have? And it's peak because light red is technically pink but can I use pink? I don't know. And here are all the reds that we've got. I'm not gonna lie this kind of scares me. I was definitely expecting more but let's see how we get on. I'm using the M Drawing Flower Girls coloring book as usual and here is our lady from last time. I'm going to name her Sapphire Azure. It perfectly fits her vibe so thank you so so much for the suggestions. Especially Andrea Wade, an anime lover. And now onto the thumbnail page. I need to pick an illustration for our red lady for today. Honestly, just looking at this page, I love how all of these monochromatic pieces are coming together. And even by coincidence, I love that I've got these two complementary colours next to each other. So the purple and yellow and the blue and orange. When you put them next to each other, they really stand out. But for today, I think this top one kind of fits the red vibe. I can imagine a red afro. So let's try it out. Red is such a dangerous colour. It can be fiery, seductive. It can show anger or love. It can also represent sacrifice, which is, which is so deep. But I really don't know what angle to go down. Well, let's start exploring. I'm going to use this thumbnail page to try to play around with ideas of what she could end up looking like. But first I put a piece of card to lean on because alcohol markers always bleed through so I cannot risk ruining the next page. But I'm thinking of going for this medium red for her skin tone. And with this face on look, I'm just adding small, small shadows. I do want to experiment with my lighting a little bit, but I have no idea what that will look like at the moment. And for the hair, I've gone for this kind of deep red for the main base color of the afro. I'm just adding small, small details with a slightly darker color. And for the real illustration, of course I'll put more time for the actual render, but I think I'm happy with this color combo. Now for the actual flowers. I just want to make this piece look balanced in the end so I'm trying to have a good variety of lighter reds and the deepest reds. I'm trying to use the same colour on the same flower at different points of the piece just to make everything cohesive. I definitely want to take advantage of the fluorescent red just to make some of the flowers stand out a little bit. At the moment I'm feeling like this is looking a little flat if I'm going to be honest. If you're familiar with my channel you know that I will use a white pen towards the end but I still want to try to implement some lighter red flowers. But maybe adding a background will help me put things into context so I'm using the lightest red that I've got. And now for the leaves, I'm using one of the darker red shades I have and I think that just helps to tie the whole thing together. It doesn't just look like random individual flowers. Now the piece is feeling a little more cohesive. It is still feeling a little bit flat so I'm colouring the top in the darker red but now I'm feeling like why did I do that? <laughs> But here is what she is looking like so far. I think for the main colouring, I'm going to have to make some changes. I will be winging it a little bit of a lot. So I guess we'll just have to see how that goes. Now that we've got our thumbnail together, I've got the most exciting news to share with you guys. If you've been keeping up with my gouache series, you know, these little paintings that I started in October and <laughs> we're still here. Well, I'm currently working on releasing prints. This is highly requested and I can't wait to give you guys the opportunity to purchase some. So I'll leave a link at the top of my link pop where you can leave your email and you'll be the first to know when it drops. This will be my first product that I'm releasing so I'm 
terrified, nervous, but I'm also so excited. And that's why I'm so happy to be running this on Shopify. I have zero experience with e-commerce and Shopify makes it so easy. It's even better to be able to link everything through my Linkpop. You guys have heard me talk about Linkpop before. It's an amazing link and bio tool that is so easy to use. It allows you to send your followers to a collection of your best links. And as an artist with a presence all over social media, we really got a hustle. It's the perfect way to direct people to everywhere you are on the internet. I use it on my Instagram and TikTok bios and I've got a link to my latest YouTube video, all of my social media pages, my emails, my website. Anywhere people find me, they can easily be directed to the next thing that they might want from me. And that's why I cannot wait to just be able to add my products as direct shoppable links on my link pop. So people are able to shop directly as they browse through social media. But again, you see that when my prints finally go live. If you're someone that sells online through Shopify, this is a no brainer. But even if you don't sell products, it's still a great way to capture all of your best links. You don't need a Shopify account to be able to set it up. It is completely free. To sign up, all you have to do is to create a free account using my link down in the description box. And now, time to paint this coloring page red. You know, a play on, time to paint this town red. You see what I was doing? Anyway, let's get to our coloring. Honestly, I am a little bit nervous, I'm not going to lie. These coloring book videos are always so nerve wracking for me because I just cannot imagine the outcome. And as someone with aphantasia, I do a lot of prep before, but it's always trial and error, which is why I love the thumbnail page. However, that thumbnail page did not give me confidence this time around. So we really just got to see how it will end up. Of course, I'm first putting the piece of card to lean on and then we can get started with the coloring. I'm starting by going straight in with the face. If you're familiar with my channel, you know that this is always the first thing that I do. I feel like if I can get the face looking good, get the face together, then I have hope for the rest of the piece. And for this one, I really want to challenge myself with doing dynamic kind of lighting so I want to do lighting coming from the left and forming like a harsher shadow on the right so I'm going gradually deeper with the colors trying not to scare myself to stop myself because alcohol markers actually dry lighter than they first appear so if you're also coloring along with me by the way I'd love to see your work so tag me on instagram at temi underscore danso but I found that you just have to be brave with your color application. And if you're using alcohol markers as well, as long as you blend while the ink is wet, then you can end up with a really smooth covering. Even just using the chisel tip side, because I know some people rely on brush tip markers, but you absolutely don't have to. In fact, I prefer using the chisel tip. So now that I've done the face and the neck and the clavicle, not gonna lie, I'm actually really proud of this clavicle area. I think it's cute. But I'm happy to move on to the lips. And initially I wanted to do a matte red lip, you know, Mac Ruby Woo, just to add to this fierce look. But after I'm feeling like doing a glossy, glossy, glossy lip. So stay tuned to the end for the white pen stage where I add all of the shine, all of the gloss and all of that. But at the moment, I'm loving this lip liner kind of vibe that I've gone for. Now it's time for the hair. This is hands down the part of the piece that terrifies me the most. Can I just say that colouring afro hair in a semi-realistic style is always difficult. You can't just rely on doing one or two lines for strands and putting highlight, put in shadow. You have to really imitate the texture. You have to show how each lock of hair falls. It's such a beautiful effect, but it's so difficult to be able to achieve. But I've quickly filled in the hair and already this color is blending in a little too much of the face. So I definitely want to go in darker. First, I'm starting by kind of just drawing in basic strands and this is where you can see that everything is trial and error for me because what are these strands <laughs> i'm just trying to roughly shape how the hair falls because it's not just standing you know there's some of it that's falling forward for the fringe and the rest of it that's kind of going backwards it's so hard to visualize it's so hard to explain but after i start by using the chisel tip side and just basically doing the exact same effect but trying to do it more in locks of hair and then i'm going gradually darker so the roots 
will always be darker that's just the way the shadowing will fall and i really like the effect i really love how it's looking now going a little bit darker for the final bit of depth and i think i'm happy with this now this is the point when did i go too far should i have stopped because i'm feeling like i want to bring back the highlights so i'm using this white acrylograph pen which is a slightly thicker nib again i'll link all my supplies down below if you want to grab it as well and you can see again a trial and error so i start by kind of mapping out where the highlights will be and then after i'm like i don't have all day <laughs> ain't nobody got time for all of that so i'm now just drawing zigzag curly kind of strand kind of pattern all over and this is a major trust the process moment because did i just ruin all of this it's all looking higgy it's looking haggard but don't worry i'm just putting in these highlights so that i can leave it to dry and then then go back with a lighter red to hopefully make it a blend we'll see so i'm grabbing the fluorescent red because it feels like you know it should give me some action some shine some glass but it's not working out it's not quite given the effect that i want and uh, i don't know did i make a mistake at the moment it's kind of sitting around the white rather than soaking into the white to then become a brighter red i don't know if i'm explaining that well but the bottom line is it is not the effect that i want but now i'm going in with my first red and actually this is perfect it's enough of a highlight for you to be like oh i can see the strands but then it's blending into the rest of the colors that i've already done and i absolutely love this effect i think it worked out perfectly and i'm so gassed with how this hair turned out also let me know your thoughts on this technique because as you can see it was completely new to me trial and error i literally made it up as i was going but one thing i found recently with doing all of the gouache paintings that i've been doing and just trying new mediums is that each medium needs a different sequence of events for, for it to work if that makes sense so for example generally i like going in with my darkest colors first which will help me get everything else into context because i found that with a lot of pieces if you don't know the darkest points you can get to you can end up being too light which wouldn't help the contrast of the piece so i think if i go straight in with the dark colors it would just help me to make sure everything is balanced contrast wise but with alcohol markers you cannot do that and the reason you can't do that is because you have to build from the lightest color and gradually go darker and this throws me off so much because you have to trust the process when you're putting your first few layers down it's higgy and haggard with my primary medium colour and pencils, it's easy to come back in with the lighter pencils. You know, it's easy to go back in with extra highlight, extra detail, kind of like what I did with the white pen. But with markers, it's just not the same. And every time I try one of these videos, every time I do any art exploration on my channel, I learn so much. And that's what I love the most about having this art channel, by the way. Just being able to explore different mediums, never knowing how the outcome will really turn out. But just taking you guys on this journey to explore my skills and just trying to create beautiful art that I'm proud of. But anyway, back to these flowers. So now I'm just trying to colour in all of these flowers, obviously red. From the thumbnail page, I realised that it was all looking a bit flat, a bit samey. So I'm keeping that in mind. But there's some of these that kind of resemble a poinsettia. And if you're familiar with my channel, you know that with these videos, I'm never trying to be accurate about what the flower actually is. But the shape of it was just giving me that vibe. So I tried to render it in that way. Overall, I'm just trying to be balanced with all of the different tints of red that I'm using. So the first flower I coloured in was in the darkest red and i'm really going in with different patterns of course not being accurate to the actual flower but just trying to create really cute effects with the base and the line work that ems did for us i'm really utilizing the fluorescent red in this illustration a lot it just added a really nice vibrancy it has like the perfect saturation just to stand out a little bit and i thought it was so cute now that i feel like i've gotten to a good point with some of the flowers this is a great time to do the background so i'm just putting washi tape around the entire illustration so that i have a border to kind of do the background on and i'm also overlapping some of the flowers so that in the end they can be overlapped against the white it just ends up really cute and for the background i'm a bit unsure but i'm using one of the lightest reds that i have it's the same one i used on the thumbnail tester page 
I always like to color in the background because I think it just ends it just makes the illustration end up looking full and to be honest I feel like I'll be cheating if I just leave the background white even if this is a self-imposed challenge <laughs> so really what is cheating but the background always takes a while and this is when I admit to myself that I cannot color in the lines <laughs> And now for the top on the thumbnail page i kind of regretted making it red because everything was giving the same so now i'm just trying to make it a really light red so i'm using the lightest color that i have but one thing i'm realizing is that could i have used gray for this challenge i mean i'll do a four pages in gray in the future but there's so many grays that are like a red gray blue gray green gray and technically that should count under red no okay i'm not gonna i'm not gonna cheat i haven't used it for my other monochromatic pieces so i'm not gonna use it now but low-key could i have and now for the finishing touches so i'm just coloring in the leaves i'll go back in with detail with a darker red but also just trying to finish up the final flowers on the piece and I love this one I colored it in the style of a tulip and again I don't know my flowers so I don't know if it's meant to be a tulip but I think the effect is so nice and now it's the time we've all been waiting for it is the white pen stage my favorite time of all time and the first thing I have to start with are the lips you already know a glossy 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 lip is my absolute fave and I just love how it brings the piece together. Like, look at that shine. And this is my favorite part of any coloring book page because it just levels it up. Like me thinking this is looking flat, this is looking a bit dead. What was that? Dead wear, flat wear, because it just gives it a whole new dimension. I absolutely love it. And the great thing about the white pen stage is that I'm not just using it for like the sharpest, sharpest white highlights. For some of the flowers, I do a similar effect to what I did with the hair, where I then go in with a lighter marker that will still give it, you know, that lighter touch, but will still be a more 3D, more leveled up, more gorgeous and more gorgeous. But here is our red beauty for today. She is stashing, absolutely sizzling. I think she turned out incredible. So let me know what we should name our lady down below. Thank you so, so much to my patrons. I love you guys so much. If you want a link in bio tool, check out Link Pop. And since you love this video, you're gonna love me coloring the blue one from the start of this video.